uh, 11 years. And for 10 of those years, I've been involved in this exercise that we're here to release this morning. The scorecard that for the last 10 years has looked at, has looked at the performance reports uh, of the major CFO Act agencies in the federal government. Uh, you'll see from our report this year that we have done a comparison from 1999, the very first year uh, that you were required to prepare those reports of the GPRA, uh, and the current year. Uh, it's also interesting if you look at uh, that continuum of time, uh, there are two agencies that have been in the top three for the whole of those 10 years, and that's quite remarkable. Uh, but also there are some agencies that over that period of time have consistently shown improvement. And the other thing that's happened over that time is that everyone has got considerably better at disclosing the information that we, the public, need if we're going to be able to make uh, some informed judgments about the performance of our government. Uh, so I think that that's a major step forward. Uh, can I just, in welcoming you this morning, recognize some of the important people uh, that we have uh, here with us today. Uh, can I just start out by saying that we're expecting Senator Warner to join us, but he has very tight, tight constraints this morning. Uh, so we will welcome the Senator when he arrives, and we'll also interrupt the proceedings when he arrives be able to hear from the Senator. Uh, we also have with us Mr. Ed Hugler, who is the Acting Deputy Secretary of the Department of Labor. Uh, we have Mr. John Leverage, who is the Chief of Staff of the Department of Defense Affairs. We have Ms. London Hurdle, who is the Acting Assistant Secretary for Budget and Programs of the Department of Transportation. Uh, I'd also like to recognize some of the people who are involved in our uh, scorecard team. And the person that probably most of you see or hear from the most is Heather Hamilton. And Heather's been responsible for managing this project for a number of years now, and she's done an extraordinary job. Uh, Jerry Gallag and Henry Ray are here uh, with us. They're our researchers, Valerie Richardson, I'm not sure whether she's in the audience yet or not, uh, and Pat Kelly, Patty Kelly, are our other researchers. Christina Fosberg and Stephanie Hepler also put in some extraordinary work in doing the hard grind of putting numbers together and things like that. They're two of our grad students, uh, and we thank them for that work. Also, one of the things that's been most valuable to this project over time is that we've had a board of advisors of people who have had extraordinary experience in government and around government, and they act as our advisors, and they point out to us where they think we are wrong uh, in our research, and they've added an enormous amount to the credibility of this project over the last 10 years. Uh, I know Jonathan Brooks in the audience, and John Kaminsky's in the audience, and uh, Victoria Campbell, I'm not sure about Paul Downey or John Kalkuta, uh, and anybody else who's one of our advisors that I didn't recognize coming in. We say thank you uh, very sincerely uh, for the work that you do in supporting this project. Uh, <clears throat> can I just make one last comment? This last comment is that over the period of time uh, that I've been here, and the period of time that we've worked with the government and with Congress on the issues of performance, we've gradually seen uh, the attention paid to performance and disclosure gradually increase. Currently, we hear lots of discussion about transparency uh, and about transparency being uh, a major goal. Uh, well, can we just correct that? Transparency is the mechanism that allows accountability to occur. Uh, and it's through that that we actually exercise accountability. So transparency on its own is not the goal. Accountability is the goal. And what we're seeking is greater accountability, and that accountability being linked to 